Good evening. We bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paolo De Rosario. We give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. My name is Diego Dario, and in tonight's Game Plan. We'll catch up with Miralco Bolt's head coach, Norman Black, as their team looks ahead to the upcoming PBA Reinforced Conference. Then coach Norman Black will help us assess the recent altercation between LeBron James and Isaiah Stewart, and we'll also break down some of the dark horse teams in the NBA Eastern Conference. And Zia Vasho dishes out her hot takes on the PNVF Champions League Women's Volleyball. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. Since joining the PBA back in 2010, the Morocco Bolts have had their fair share of finals appearances in deep playoff runs. But one thing has eluded them so far, a PBA title. Now, with the upcoming PBA Governor's Cup set to kick off soon, the Bolts are looking to repeat the success from their recent Philippine Cup campaign and go even further. Now, joining us tonight to talk about their team moving forward, charging forward rather, is 11-time PBA champion coach Norman Black. Coach, great to have you back on the show. Hey, coach. Hey, guys. Good evening. All right, coach, let's start off first with, uh, I, I guess, one of the things that was always in the news recently, which is a change of imports for the Morocco Bulls, Shabazz Mohamed not coming over now. Instead, you have uh, Tony Bishop coming in. Can you tell us a bit about the reason for the change and what you expect from your new import? Yes, that was pretty uh, disappointing with Shabazz Mohamed. Um, you know, he'd already signed a contract. He flew to Los Angeles, got his visa from the Philippine consulate. And then the next day, he informed us that he couldn't make it because of personal concerns. Uh, that put us in a uh, not panic mode, but we had to react immediately because we, of course, you can't start the conference without an import. So we decided to contact uh, Tony Bishop, who was one of the guys we were looking at before we signed up Shabazz Muhammad. Luckily for us, uh, Tony had just finished his stint in Puerto Rico maybe about a week ago, mm -hmm. and he was willing to come over and play for us. So now we're just waiting for him to receive his visa from the consulate there in the United States. And as soon as he gets his visa, he'll be flying over. Well, there was a time, Coach, when you didn't have an import. I remember you suited up uh, way back in the day, but I don't think we're, I think we're far removed from I, that. I would now. love to see that, though, if yeah. there are videos of that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that, that will never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could barely walk after that game. I was 40 years old when I did that, so uh, right. that won't, you won't be seeing that happen again for sure. <laughs> All right, Coach, so we talked about the import. Let's talk about a bit about your performance last uh, conference. You guys fell short in the semis against Magnolia. How would you assess the team's performance, of course, in that Philippine conference? Well, the sad part about basketball and, and leagues and tournaments is that everybody's going to fall short except for one team. Only one team's going to win the championship, and everybody else is going to be disappointed in some way. Um, it's, it's good to be considered one of the better teams in the All-Filipino now. We struggled for a long time and we barely made it to the playoffs for so many years. So it's nice to be up there with the top four teams every conference now in the All-Filipino, at least the last two conferences. Um, it shows that we are improving as a team. And this conference is normally a conference where we do well because we're able to, re to recruit pretty good imports. Uh, we've had AD in the past, along with some other guys. And uh, we're hoping Tony Bishop will be able to come in and fill in that role for us and play the big man position for us this conference. Absolutely. And uh, coach, speaking about uh, your developments going into the next conference, Amaralco have stayed relatively still in terms of uh, player movement. Uh, what does that say about how you see your squad currently? And uh, how are you trying to develop making sure that all your shortcomings in the Philippine Cup won't repeat in the next conference? Well, there weren't very many movements during the offseason. They were done by a few teams. Um, and normally those teams are the ones who make movements during the offseason. Um, San Miguel made a lot of movements. I think uh, Talking Text picked up one player in Gap Banal. Uh, but for the most part, during this in between conferences, you really have to stay pat because there's not much really you can do unless you can get a trade that will be to your to your benefit. And right now, we, we feel pretty good about our team, the guys we have. We think we're growing as a team. And like I said, this is normally the conference where we do pretty good because we get a pretty good import. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully, Tony Bishop will be able to come in at the last second and be able to do that for us because as of now, he's still not here in the Philippines. And Coach, you mentioned that you guys usually do, especially in the Governor's Cup, you guys really do well, of course, with a three-time you know, best import in Allen Durham. But with Tony Bishop right now, how, how is he adjusting to the team and to the system? And how 
is the team adjusting to him as well? Especially with your limited communication, Coach, yep. because as you said, he's not here, but I'm sure you've already sent tape over. Well, I've watched him play. He's a good player. And the reason why we do well in this conference is because uh, we normally uh, lack a little bit as far as our big men are concerned, particularly in the middle of the center position. So uh, bringing in imports who can play the power forward and center position just strengthens our team and takes away one of our weaknesses. And that's mm -hmm. what's going to happen in this conference, I believe. Tony Bishop is not Shabazz Muhammad. Shabazz is more of a, a wingman, a guy who can score a lot of points. Tony Bishop is more of a guy who can play the five, four, or three position, depending on what type of team he's playing on. And he gets a lot of rebounds. He can guard the big man position. So he kind of fills the, the, the what we need a little bit better than maybe Shabazz would have because he can play the inside game. But at the same time, Shabazz would have been an unstoppable scorer. So, you know, you take whatever you can. Well, uh, Coach, more on your local group here. So you, we talked a bit about the fact that, okay, you're very happy with the group that you had. In fact, a lot of them did shine in the last bubble. And you look at the development that they are having now in the offseason. Are there any players in particular that you can, I guess, tease uh, your Morocco Bolts fans to watch out for going into the next conference? Uh, maybe a marked improvement coming from the end of the last bubble. Well, I think... The entire team has been moving very, very well. That's why I'm a little bit disappointed our import isn't here yet, because I think if the import was here, we could really mesh quite well going into this conference. Now we're going to be rushed into trying to hand feed the import as soon as he arrives, probably for about a week before we actually have to play games. Um, well, Aaron's back. That's number one. Yeah. He's not hurt anymore. He broke his hand last conference. He's been playing very well in practice. Um, Nards Pinto has continued to play well. Uh, I like the conditioning of um, Raymond Amazon compared to the last conference. I think he's um, in much better condition, and I think he'll play a lot better this conference than he did last time. And of course, um, you know, Cliff Hodge is always in shape and always ready to work hard. And our best player has been very consistent in, in practice, and that's Chris Newsom. All right, Coach, but as a whole, as the whole team, Meralco Bolts, what's your goal coming into this new conference? It's always to get to the semifinals. Make it to the semifinals because if you don't get there, you have no chance of winning the championship. So entering the semis is really the, the first goal that we set for ourselves. Um, of course, you got to get through the quarterfinals, but the semifinals is what we're after right now. Then we want to take it from there once we, we get there. What we do know is that, you know, for most part, most people agree that Magnolia, San Miguel, Talking Tex, and Hinebra are the four strongest teams in the league. So for you to get in, one of them has to be out. So <laughs> that's really the goal is to find one of them that we can um, replace in the semifinals this conference. That'll be very exciting, Coach, and I can't wait for PBA to come back, hopefully with fans. And uh, if that happens, boy, it's going to be quite a conference. I'll be there watching. Oh, yeah. No, you, no you'll be there covering the games. What are you talking about? you got to get to work, Diego. Uh, all right. But, Coach, we're not done with you yet because after the break. Coach Roman Black will help us assess the recent altercation between LeBron James and Isaiah Stewart. And we'll also break down some of the dark horse teams in the NBA Eastern Conference. Stay tuned. You're watching the game. the game. My name is Diego Dario. This week's hottest topic in the NBA is one Mr. Isaiah Stewart of the Detroit Pistons, who recently got an involved in an altercation, if I must say, with the king, LeBron James. After getting elbowed in the face and seeing blood come down his head, Isaiah let LeBron, the Lakers, and the rest of the world know how he felt about that incident, charging down the court not one, not two, but three times. As for us, he gave us a memory in dire need of a basketball breakdown. Still joining us for our discussion is NBA.com Philippines all-star writer, Coach Norman Black. Now, Coach, I'm sure you saw that altercation. 
uh, between yeah. LeBron James and Isaiah Stewart. Stewart suspended for two games. LeBron got suspended for a game and also fines were brought as well. Did you see the play? How, do you think LeBron did it intentionally? Well, I think from what I saw, um, LeBron was losing leverage. He was being pushed out of the play by Isaiah Stewart. And it felt mm -hmm. like he might fall to the ground out, out of the, off the push. And he just swung his arm, basically, to try to gain leverage. And he hit the guy in the face. The one thing we need to say about basketball is you get hit in the face all the time. It's not like it's unusual. Yeah. I mean, you get elbowed in the face, you get slapped in the face, you get scratched in the eye. It happens all the time in the game of basketball. The only problem is the fact that, yes, LeBron James did hit him in the face and he should have been uh, called for a foul and maybe even fined for it. I did not feel as though he should have been suspended, but you know, that's up to the NBA what they want to do with their players. But at the same time, you have to understand that if you're Isaiah Stewart, okay, you took the blow. That's one thing. It, it seemed like LeBron James was trying to apologize. But then all of a sudden, you start tasting blood <laughs> coming down the side of your face, and everything changes. You know, all of a sudden, you get more upset because you're bleeding. And this isn't about anything other than the fact that, hey, this guy just opened up a cut over my eye, so I'm going to go after him. The only thing I didn't like was the fact that Isaiah Stewart waited until there was about 10 people in between yep. him and LeBron before he started charging LeBron. I mean, normally, if you're going to hit somebody, you should hit him right away. I mean, you shouldn't <laughs> wait until there's other people there to protect you. So, um, Interesting situation, you know, the Lakers could not afford to have LeBron suspended because they need him as much as possible, but uh, it happens. It happens in the game of basketball, it happens in the NBA. Coach, you were actually part of the Pistons in the 80s. Uh, you had a season with them. Uh, you, I'm, I'm sure you've them. seen. I'm sure you've <laughs> seen a lot of uh, you know a lot of hard plays and all of that. Where does that rank in your mind in terms of, I guess, the impact first on of LeBron's fist onto uh, Isaiah Stewart's brow, and of course, um, have you seen a reaction that hot ever in your career or just watching the game? Well, the hit is normal, like I said. I mean, it could happen in the PBA. Guys get bloodied in the PBA as well as the NBA, so it's no, no difference as far as the game, the way the game is played. I thought the reaction was a little bit overacting, to be yeah. quite honest with you. Like I said, um, the guy I fear the most is the guy who doesn't say anything to me. He just walks up to me and punches me, not the guy that runs around the court trying to bust through 10, 12 people to try to get at me. I don't really fear that guy. So I'm sure <laughs> LeBron was probably standing there saying, oh, let him through. Yeah. <laughs> he, wants well, to, he wants to get through that bad. Hey, LeBron's not a small guy now. No. I know Isaiah Stewart yep. is quite big, but LeBron is also a pretty big guy. Uh, a pretty strong guy also. I agree. I agree. But you know what, Coach? Let's talk about actual basketball play right now, so in particular <laughs> in okay. the Eastern Conference. So right now we are talking a bit about the playoff chances. Actually, the dark horses of the Eastern Conference because there are a lot of surprising teams here. Uh, you gave a couple here, so uh, I'll just list them all out just in case you can't get to all of them. So it's the Washington Wizards, Chicago Bulls, Charlotte Hornets, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, when we take a look at this list, uh, there are a couple of surprising ones, particularly the Wizards and the Cavaliers. I want to start off with Cleveland first, Coach. Uh, when you look at them, what do you see? A young team. A uh, young team who did who got a very good draft pick in Mobley, who has helped them strengthen their team. Jared Allen has done a great job. Their two guards are super quick, super fast, and super productive. Um, Mackinnon has played well for them. Ricky Rubio probably has had one of his best years ever in the last four or five years. So all of a sudden, they've come together, and their unit is pretty strong. Um, to be honest with you, the question I have is this. Mm -hmm. Right now, Chicago's in. They weren't in last year. Yeah. Washington's in. They weren't in last year. At least they came in oh, the man. last time. <laughs> Charlotte's okay. in. Who's going to be out? That's the big question as far as I'm concerned. You've got Atlanta down. They were very good last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Philadelphia right now is right there on the um, in the borderline. Uh, Milwaukee is only 10 and 8. Boston is only 10 and 8. So my point is, if Chicago, Washington, Cleveland, and Charlotte make it, who's going to be out? All That's right, the big question. Yep. Uh, you know, I I agree. Yep. I agree because I'm looking at the I'm looking at some of the lineups right now in terms of a round one of the Eastern Conference uh, last year. 
So you had Philly, Washington, uh, New York, Atlanta, Milwaukee, and uh, Miami, Brooklyn, Boston as well. So you're right. Something's got to give there. And I don't know if you can pick four out of it, Jake. Yep, that's for sure. And also, it's also in the start of the season, Coach. Now, let's talk about the team that you mentioned earlier, Coach. Washington, the Washington Wizards. You know, they lost Westbrook, but got a number of solid role players. They were actually number one at one point this uh, early in the season. Now they're at number four. Do you think they can continue their stellar play all the way to the playoffs? Yeah, that's interesting because remember, they brought in a lot of new players this year and they're all meshing very, very well so far to start the season. One of the reasons why I think they may be consistent and they may be there at the end, not in the position they're in right now. I think they're in the number four slot. I think they'll probably drop a little bit. It's because yeah. they do have a star player in Bradley Beal. They do have a lot of good support players, but so far this year, they've been a pretty good road team. And that's why I, I really analyze how these teams do on the road, because if you do well on the road, then you probably have a good chance of sustaining your success the, in, the entire year. That was the problem with the Charlotte Hornets. They got off to a great start, then they went on the road and everything just fell apart. And then they went back home and everything came back together again. Yeah. So Charlotte have to prove that they can win games on the road. Yeah. That's going to be a key. Yeah, so yeah, you just mentioned the Hornets there. So I want to talk about the Bulls because the Bulls honestly are one of the more exciting teams to watch in this sure. season in particular. Uh, the way they play and the Lonzo Bull is doing great. I have to call Lonzo, him Lonzo Bull? Bull. I have to call him Lonzo Bull. And the coach, <laughs> when you look at the, how Chicago is doing right now, do you think that this is sustainable? One, is it sustainable? Two, how much are the Lakers regretting getting rid of uh, Alex Caruso? And three, do you think that this is a team that we can consider a dark horse in the whole playoff picture? Well, let's go back to the road games again. Uh, Chicago has actually done very, very well on the road. And they have done to the point where I would say that if they can continue to do that, they're definitely going to be around at the end. Uh, DeMar DeRozan is probably having his best year ever as a player in the NBA. Uh, Zach Levine has never met a shot he didn't like. <laughs> and he makes the majority of them, so it's pretty good. Um, but you're right, uh, Alex Caruso has been a, a big plus for the Chicago team, and I'm sure the Lakers wish they had kept him. Uh, you could see that the other night. He did not play for the Chicago Bulls, and they got beat pretty badly in their, their first game back at home. Um, but I think Chicago is definitely going to be around. There's no question about that. Okay, so the playoff of teams that we're looking at right now, again, just a quick recap. Washington Wizards, Chicago Bulls, Charlotte Hornets, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Interesting and, uh, takes, Coach. No, and you know what? Now, now that I think about it, I agree. I wonder if, like, will Boston fans be sad at the end of the yep. regular season? Milwaukee and all of fans. That. Milwaukee fans. You never know. Like, if the health will also be a big well, factor. Well, I think Milwaukee will be there. You think yeah. Milwaukee will be there? Yeah, this They'll be there. All right. So, you know what? We're going to see We're gonna see whether or not uh, your predictions come true, Coach. But don't worry. Okay. Throughout the entire season, you can come in and change that, whether uh, whether you think that it should be changed or not. Thank you very much for joining us here, Coach. Thanks so much, Thank Coach. Thank you, guys. All right. When we return, Zizer Vaso dishes out her hot takes on the PNVF Champions League Women's Volleyball. Stay tuned. You're watching the game. <laughs> 